This video is sponsored by HelloFresh. Stay tuned to the end of the video to learn more. Hello friends and welcome back to Brutal Foods. My name is Chef Ian Brutal Foods and once more, I hunger. Today I've assembled a number of tasty morsels to try. I simply walked the aisles of my local grocery and grabbed anything that looked interesting and that could be interesting in a good or a bad way. Uh, so now I'm just gonna sit down, try them all, and assign them each a rating on the ESRB rating system. Today we're gonna be checking out Lunchables Brunchables Bacon and Cheese, Puffworks Naturally Flavored Strawberry PB&J Peanut Butter Puffs, Pop-Tart Crisps Frosted Strawberry Alicious, Oh My S'mores Gourmet Chocolate Experience, Yo Play Yogurt, Pink Starburst Flavor, and Gushers Flavor with Bustin' Beads. Oh, wait, no, I'm sorry, that's, uh, that's Burstin' Beads. Burstin'. And finally, we'll wash it all down with a caramel-flavored Coca-Cola with coffee. What a healthy-sounding meal. I actually picked up way more things at the grocery store than I initially planned on, so let's not waste any more time. Let's get started. I'm specifically filming this video in the morning so that I can take advantage of all the breakfast items I ended up with. I, I got about three. So let's start here with Lunchables Brunchables. Uh, initial observation, I love the name. It's got Lunchables, it's got Brunchables, and it looks pretty Munchables. It actually looks kind of disgusting, but that doesn't rhyme. Bacon and cheese, Oscar Mayer fully cooked bacon, Kraft cheddar, pasteurized prepared cheese product, flatbread, and blueberry muffin. It does seem a little strange that the only food you can actually see with your eyes uh, is the blueberry muffin. Well, cause yeah, the blueberry muffin's gonna look good, but what does the flatbread and the bacon look like? You can't tell, it's, uh, it's hidden from view. My guess is that this meal is just not gonna look very good, especially if this is as good as they could get it to look on the front. Uh, it doesn't look particularly appetizing. Well, let's eat it anyway. I'm not gonna say that it looks amazing, and I'm not gonna say that it smells amazing either, uh, cause it doesn't. I don't think it looks so bad that you should hide it from view exactly, but it looks sad. It's not a, a very glamorous reveal. You got your muffin, flatbread, your cheese, and the bacon. Right off, I'm hit with a very strange smell. It's gotta either be the bacon or the muffin? Compartment has its own unique smell and it all smells a little bit weird. I guess since they're all vacuum packed in their own chamber, maybe I just release all the scents at once and it's just stinky right now, but I don't love it. Okay, so it comes with two different flatbreads that you actually break apart. That looks good. <laughs> okay, the smell is getting to me, so let's pick up the pace here. Flatbread. Next, I'm going to put some bacon on here, though I'm allowed to build this sandwich however I want, according to the instructions, as long as I have a base flatbread and a top flatbread. Doesn't say anything about not using the muffin. I might be able to put the muffin on the sandwich, but I'll resist. I don't like this cheese. Uh, it's pretty much regular Kraft American Singles cheese. You want some fake ass cheese alongside your real bacon? I don't know, the bacon doesn't look bad. This kind of looks just like when you buy bacon jerky, it pretty much just looks exactly like this. The bacon's all right. You probably get better bacon just buying some bacon jerky, but that's not bad, that's not bad. So, I've assembled our sandwich and it looks Good. It looks a little fakey, a little cheapo, but that's because it is a little fakey and a little cheapo, so let's just get on with it already. What do you think about this, huh? Not interested. Oh 
Oh my God. Well, it doesn't taste bad. It does just taste like bread. In fact, I'm a little shocked at how overpowering the bread flavor is. I don't, I don't taste any of the cheese. I don't taste any of the bacon, just the bread. It's just bread. It's just bread. Oh, I need something to drink. Well, I just described this sandwich as very dry, uh, very pita bready. It's pretty much just a pita pocket um, without anything inside. I mean, I know there's stuff in there, but I don't taste it. What if I just loaded up the remainder of the sandwich with the rest of the bacon and the cheese? I really just, I would like to taste something besides the bread. There we go. Nope. I like the bacon. I like, I'll eat the bacon, but I won't eat the rest. It's really honestly just not very good. Very dry, very bready. All you really taste is the bread. Like I said, uh, that's what I said, and now I'm dead. All right, let's give the muffin a check. The muffin looks all right. It looks a lot like, um, is it Little Debbie that have the, has the mini muffins? It looks like the mini muffins. You know the ones. It's okay. It's like the Little Bites muffins, only not as good. But still the best part of the meal. I suppose that's supposed to be the dessert portion, but it really is only the only, uh, the only edible portion of the Brunchable. Not a fan. I'm usually someone who likes more bread in a meal. I like things to be a little more bready instead of having too much filling. But even for me, this is just dry and it just tastes like dry pita bread. You might as well just eat some dry pita bread. Not very good. Here's a review from the Brunchables on Target.com. Tastes weird, but energizes and cheap. I feel weird every time I eat this, but it's so cheap and great for work breaks. Taste, two out of five. Quality, two out of five. Value, five out of five. I guess this review is mostly accurate. I do feel a little weird having eaten it, um, but I guess I feel energized. I don't know, maybe just weird. Don't keep eating something if it makes you feel weird, right? Just maybe stop. We're very sorry you experienced this. This is very unusual as we operate under the highest quality control procedures at all our plants. The, the Lunchable team wants them to call to, to figure out why this person feels so weird, but they, but they keep eating it. All right, well, if I'm gonna rate this using the ESRB rating system, I suppose I would give this one a... Um, Ayo, adults only. Don't feed this to your kids. But you know, if you're an adult and you wanna eat something terrible that's cheap and makes you feel weird. All right, so I don't recommend the Lunchables Brunchables for lunch or brunch, uh, but let's see if we can't find something tasty in the breakfast zone with Pop-Tart Crisps. Crisps is a difficult word to say, crisps. I've always been a fan of Pop-Tarts, specifically the, uh, uh, specifically the uh, purple and blue one. What's that called? It's got a weird name. Berrylicious or something. And the reason these are interesting to me is that uh, I'm hoping it'll be kind of like the corner of a Pop-Tart. I think that the best part of a Pop-Tart is the corner. That's where you've got the best breading to filling ratio. You want a little bit more of that bread. You know, I was talking about it with the Lunchables. Very important, you get a little bit of that bread, not too much of the filling. And so that's kind of what I'm expecting with the Pop-Tart crisps. On the back of the box, there is a Crisp Quest, which is a maze made out of Pop-Tart crisps, which is pretty cool. I was always a big fan of mazes growing up, so I feel like this would have entertained me as a child. Seems like people in the maze are divided against uh, either eating the maze or completing the maze. It's also got some fun facts that are going to amaze you. 
Uh, it's made with five grams whole grains, which really would have impressed me when I was a kid. And there's also no high fructose corn syrup. Something super interesting that I would not have expected from a Pop-Tart, it says right on the front, not for the toaster. That's kind of wild, right? I mean, I still think that putting your Pop-Tart in the toaster is basically a sin, uh, but even I am surprised that they just wouldn't let you do it at all. Pretty fun packaging though. I mean, I guess, I don't know, it's, a, it's blue. Hmm. Now it has been a little while since I've had a real Pop-Tart, but the crust looks different to me. It even feels a little bit different. I'm gonna bet that this doesn't taste exactly like an old Pop-Tart. It smells similar. <laughs> I believe that the filling is maybe the same, but the crust definitely seems a little bit different to me. It has a very familiar taste. It doesn't remind me of Pop-Tarts, but it reminds me of something. I think it's possible that the inside of the Pop-Tart is the same, maybe this filling, but it's not as close as you might expect. It, it's pretty different. It's also not very crisp, um, which is a surprise. I keep biting it, hoping it will like snap, but it doesn't. I think the crispiness just comes from the icing on top. And speaking of the icing on top, it looks really weird. Um, it's not solid. It's like a bunch of little lines going down the Pop-Tart. Kind of strange. And you know, now that I'm really looking at it, it looks like you get even less of the area that I was hoping for. It looks like the filling really reaches all the way to the end of the Pop-Tart, which might be a plus for some people, but I like the crust. I like when I get a little bit more of that crust. Yeah. It's not crispy. It's arguable if it's even crunchy. I would say it's a little bit crunchy, but not crispy. All that said, these aren't too bad. Maybe not what I expected, but still not too bad. It's very sweet. It's basically a uh, breakfast candy bar is what it tastes like. I mean, I know it says that there's no high fructose corn syrup, but it sure does taste like there's a lot of sugar in there. But that might be fine for some people. You might not uh, care about too much sugar. I don't watch my sugar all that closely, but in the morning, I feel like it's a very strong flavor. Um, I don't think I would want something so sweet right off the bat. Would I eat it over the Brunchables? Absolutely, absolutely. This tastes way better than the Brunchables. It's not packed with seven grams of protein, but it is packed with uh, five whole grains and nine grams of sugar. But I'm not really here to judge the health so much as the taste, and it tastes pretty good. Uh, maybe not as great as a Pop-Tart, but that's coming from someone with nostalgia for Pop-Tarts, so anytime they change anything, uh, it's gonna make me upset. This doesn't really make me upset, it's just kind of like a why? Um, more portable, I guess? I don't know. You know, it kind of reminds me of like a Fig Newton. Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Like a crunchy, overly sugary Fig Newton. Not so bad, honestly. I kind of like them. Now if I'm rating this on the ESRB scale, I think I gotta give this a T for teens. It's friendly and familiar. It's like a Pop-Tart, but it's a little bit different. It's got a bit of an edge like a teen might have. Pongo, a verified Pop-Tart Crisps user, says, horrible. This is a Pop-Tart that you don't pop in the toaster. What is that about? I hated the sweet taste. I'll agree that it is a little sweet, probably sweeter than a Pop-Tart, I think, uh, but it's, how do you not expect it to be sweet? It looks like sugar. Use your eyes, use your brain. All right, now I'm starting to get a little worried because it's time to try the Yoplait yogurt. Pink Starburst flavor and Gushers with Bustin' Beads. They both come in at about 60 cents each and um, I'm concerned. I probably shouldn't have picked these up. Don't really know why you would need or want 
Starburst and Gushers flavored yogurt. But here we are. There are actually more in this line. There are more Starburst flavors, and I think there's one more Gusher flavor. This one is the blue raspberry variant. Uh, I just picked two flavors that I actually enjoy. Pink, uh, pink Starburst is my favorite Starburst, and uh, I don't hate blue raspberry. I, I, uh, it's not my favorite, but it's fine. I didn't realize until I got home that this one had bursting beads. Uh, that scares me, so I'm gonna save that one for last. Let's check out Pink Strawberry, or just Strawberry. Strawberry Starburst, Pink Strawberry Starburst. Ugh. Well, it's pink. It's very, very pink. Now, before I start here, I, I will be transparent and say that yogurt is not my favorite thing in the world, um, but I really wanted to try this anyway. So I'm gonna do my best to rate this as a yogurt versus what I would really want to eat because I'm just not like a yogurt guy, you know? I'm not really a breakfast guy in general, so it makes a lot of sense for me to review all these breakfast foods if you think about it. I was getting ready to say that it tastes just like a regular strawberry uh, yogurt, but it doesn't. It, it's got a, not off flavor, but different than just a straight up strawberry. It's very weird. It tastes to me like they're clearly going for like a fake strawberry flavor, which I guess they are, because it's not like pink Starburst tastes just like a strawberry or anything. It's not, it's not bad. As someone who um, doesn't really love yogurt, this is not bad, it kind of tastes like candy. It's still very tart, not overly sweet, especially coming from the Pop-Tart crisps. Now this is a pretty good sweetness level, I think, for a breakfast. I don't think I would choose it over a regular strawberry, I think, to me, it's a little apparent that they're chasing that fake strawberry taste. I think I'd rather chase a, a real strawberry taste in a yogurt, but it's not so bad. And hey, if you're trying to get your kids to eat yogurt, I mean, put Starburst on the front and there you go, I get it. Let's try this Gushers Blue Raspberry here. Oh, no! Oh, that's unfortunate. Well, it is very blue, but the problem is that the bustin' beads are green. That looks weird, doesn't it? I mean, isn't yogurt technically spoiled dairy or something? You don't want something in your yogurt that looks a little moldy, right? I don't know. The bursting beads are also a lot bigger than I expected. I, I thought they were gonna be maybe half this size, but this is like the size of a pea or something. They're pretty big. The, the beads are just so green. Like why not fill it with blue beads? Why they gotta be green? No! No! Ah! Ah! Mm -mm. What the fuck? So the bustin' beads are filled with a liquid, not like kind of a gummy, gushery texture. It's a liquid. It says on the back that it has passion fruit juice in it. Maybe I'll try and taste that next time. It was very unexpected. I did not enjoy that experience. And also, if the if the pink strawberry was trying to go for a fake flavor, this thing is like toxic. Like it's trying to go for a, a flavor that doesn't even exist. Look at that. Look at this radioactive yogurt. You really want to eat these <laughs> radioactive uh, bustin' beads? Oh my god, it's so weird. It's oh! I will give the beads some credit. Um, they do like pop in your mouth. When you bite down on them, you feel that bead bust in your mouth, let me tell you. It's so weird. And then after the, the bead has burst, the skin stays there. You, you have all these like bead skins that you gotta swallow. It's, it's strange. How much more of this do I gotta eat? Are you satisfied yet? No?
It's really hard for me to taste the actual yogurt. I feel like I like the yogurt, but I don't like what's inside the beads. And when it all mixes together, I definitely don't like that. Now, honestly, even just the yogurt has kind of a funky taste. It tastes kind of how it looks. It tastes like blue, okay? It just tastes like blue. Also, there are so many bursting beads in here, you can't avoid them. No, no. Really gross, not for me. I would say that this is good as maybe an experience. It was interesting to try, but it was not enjoyable to me at all. I would say that maybe kids would like this, but honestly, if your kid likes this, they're fucking freaks. This one still tasted pretty good. A little fakey, like it's chasing a fake taste. But this one, I, I feel like I might have like intestinal issues from these uh, bursting beads. I'm gonna give Pink Starburst uh, an early childhood rating. I would say that kids might be attracted to this, but adults, unless you're a huge Starburst enthusiast, are probably gonna prefer a regular strawberry yogurt. And then for the, the bustin' beads, I gotta give it adults <sighs> only. Only adults should try this, and only if you really know all of the risks. These beads, okay? They're not messing around. They are bustin'. Bursting? So yeah, that's, that's kind of my opinion on these two. Definitely avoid, not too bad. Uh, and that's coming from someone who doesn't eat a lot of yogurt, uh, doesn't really care for yogurt in general. So uh, do with that information what you will. <laughs> well, initially I was going to wait until the end of the video to try this, but I actually think that it fits in with the breakfast motif of the first few. So let's go ahead and take a look at the Coca-Cola with coffee. I actually heard about this stuff right before I found it in the store, and I mean like a day before I found it in the store. I just discovered it, and then I walked into Fred Meyer, and there were displays for the Coke with coffee everywhere. It is not a subtle grocery store campaign, at least in my area. It is very aggressive. It was hard to walk the Fred Meyer without noticing the Coke with coffee, so I had to try it. It runs $1.29 at Safeway, with a club card at least, otherwise it is $2.39. Now this is just one flavor, there's actually three total flavors. We've got caramel, vanilla, and dark roast, and then each of those versions also has a sugar-free variant. I decided on the caramel version because I figured that flavor would complement the Coke half of this equation pretty nicely, and I decided to go with the version with sugar in it because I ain't no bitch. No, I ain't no diabetic bitch. <laughs> Smells interesting. I know normally you wouldn't smell a drink before you drink it, but I feel like it's, it's my duty as a food reviewer to also review the smell. It smells like Coke, but maybe with some coffee in there? Was that helpful? Oh, that's interesting. That is super weird. It's kind of exactly what I expected, and that's weird to me. It really does taste just like Coke with some coffee in it. It's kind of crazy. The caramel, uh, my taste buds are having a little bit of difficulty pinning that flavor down. Uh, I think that if I lined each of the flavors up and gave them all a taste, it would make a lot more sense to me. Right now I'm struggling to find the caramel though. Right now it's just kind of Coke and coffee. Very interesting. I I'm intrigued, a little confused. I wanna try the other flavors, actually. It has an aftertaste. It, it might be a coffee aftertaste, maybe it's the caramel, but it definitely has some type of aftertaste that I'm not super crazy about. But I mean, coffee gives you an aftertaste too, so that's not a deal breaker or anything. Pretty crazy. I'm gonna go as far to say that this is probably one of my favorite cold brewed drinks that I've had. I don't like a lot of cold coffees. I like a hot coffee. I don't care if it's 110 degrees outside. I want a hot coffee. But sometimes it's not always the best option. Sometimes you want to travel with a drink that you can open later, so you want something cold. Typically, I would get 
the Starbucks Frappuccinos drinks, which don't taste anything like an actual Frappuccino. But nowadays, I might give this a shot. Taste-wise, I think it's better than the cold brewed Frappuccinos. It does have a bit of a coffee taste in there. And I'm a fan of Coke, so I kind of like the carbonation and the hint of Coke in there. The more I drink it, the more I think that caramel comes through, but I'm really not digging the aftertaste. I think if I had something like this, I would need a, like a pack of gum to chase it with. But yeah, I'm getting energy. Now here's a downside to the Coca-Cola oh, with caramel, the carbonation. And I'm a fan of Coke, so I kind of like the carbonation. And you may have gathered this by now, but uh, I have a bit of a sensitive stomach, especially in the morning, which is when I would kind of consider drinking this. And the idea of waking up and the first thing I drink is a carbonated beverage does not sound good. One or the other I can handle. Coffee, carbonation, putting them together is a little bit of a recipe dis for disaster for me, um, but it's still pretty tasty. Even now I'm getting burpy and uh, a little nauseous. I'm gonna keep drinking it though. Don't keep eating something if it makes you feel weird, right? Just maybe stop. Really interesting. I'm not gonna say delicious, but very interesting. Honestly, I was never a big fan of vanilla Coke, but I would imagine that the vanilla variant of this might be the superior one. I don't think I would like the dark roast. I think that might be too dark. Uh, but I think the vanilla one would be good. But honestly, it'll probably be forever before I try another one of these because I feel like I would only be getting it just to try it. It just doesn't fit with my lifestyle, really, this drink. Is that a thing? I don't drink a ton of soda anymore, and when I do, it's not in the morning, which is typically when I want my coffee. So this one's a bit of a question mark for me, but I don't know, maybe someone out there might want to try it now. It's pretty interesting. How many times have I called it interesting? Enough times? I can't finish it though. Honestly, it's making my stomach a little upset. Uh, not a huge red flag because again, I've got a sensitive stomach, so not a huge soccer for me. But pretty interesting, pretty good. Alexis G124 says, three stars, has an odd taste. Has an odd taste, but is not the worst. I wanna try the other flavors, but so far I've only had the caramel. It literally tatsy like Coke and coffee beans. I don't think I would get these to drink all the time, but if it's all I could get, I would drink it again. That's probably the most agreeable review that I have found on Brutal Foods. That is how I feel. I agree with Alexis G. 124. Oh yeah, I guess I gotta rate this on the ESRB scale. I'm gonna give this a, uh, oh my God. I'm gonna give this uh, an adults only. I feel like, uh, I think I have the hiccups now. I, I think I'm gonna give this Coca-Cola with coffee. I think I'm gonna give this Coca-Cola with coffee an adults ah. only rating because I think this is a very adult flavor. I know you've got stuff like Frappuccinos, you know, from Starbucks with a bunch of sugar that ends up tasting like a candy drink. And despite, excuse me, despite all of the added sugars in here, still got a very strong coffee taste um, and a very strong aftertaste. It's very bitter. And if children's stomachs are weak and pathetic like my own, it's not gonna go down very easily, is it? I'm sitting here with hiccups and I got two other items to review, but it's just completely wrecked my stomach. I changed my mind. I will not be drinking more of Coke with coffee. As intriguing as the combination is, I just don't think it's for me. <laughs> if you've got a sensitive stomach, maybe double think on the Coke with coffee because it's not treating my own too well. Next up are the Puffworks Naturally Flavored Strawberry PB&J Peanut Butter Puffs. This was actually the first thing I grabbed um, at the store. I found it in the uh, chip aisle. And I'm really curious because I've noticed kind of a puff trend. It's like a Cheeto that's not a Cheeto. They've got all these different flavors. You got chocolate puffs, peanut butter puffs, savory puffs, sweet puffs, and I wanna know what's up with all the puffs. 
made one batch at a time with organic peanut butter. <laughs> Simple, satisfying, and great tasting. <laughs> Am I gonna have hiccups for the rest of this video? Here we go. Maybe not. Oh, don't like that at all! <sighs> what is that about? What's that smell? <laughs> okay, m maybe it was just the initial, you know, whiff of smell, but I did not like how that smelled initially. Now that I'm getting in there again, it does smell kind of like peanut butter, so that's good. They look so weird, and they smell just as strange. I have not been very adventurous with my snack puffs. I mean, I'll eat a Cheeto, I'll eat a Pirate's Booty, but, um, you know, nothing like this. Is this supposed to be for like a snack, for a dessert? The, the PB and J-ness of it all makes me very confused as to what time of day you're supposed to be eating this. Probably no time of day? I mean, look at this. Doesn't that look good? It looks like a poop. I mean, it just looks like a lot of little poops. Okay, <laughs> really weird. Um, okay. Um, okay. okay. You know, for all my complaining before I ate one, I gotta say that tastes like a PB and J, especially after the, the puff breaks down. It's almost like you just ate a PB and J sandwich. Okay. 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 I'm coming around. It's not terrible. I still don't know when I'm supposed to eat this, but it's not so bad. It's almost like future it's almost like future food. It's like, can you believe they packed all the nutrition of a whole sandwich into a tiny little Cheeto puff? Not that that's what they did, but in the future, maybe all of our meals will be condensed down to little puff experiences. I've changed my tune. I've changed my tune. I thought that these were gonna be scary and terrifying, but it's not a bad little snack, especially if you're a fan of PB&J. It straight up just tastes like a PB&J. These PB&J puffs are going in to join my Coke with coffee in my belly. <laughs> this is all right. Honestly, I think I could see kids liking this. Kids like PB&Js. This tastes like a PB&J. But maybe you should just make them a PB&J. Like, are you gonna give this as a side with a PB&J? Here's your peanut butter and jelly with your peanut butter and jelly Cheetos? I don't think so. But it's pretty good. Say you're a really enthusiastic peanut butter and jelly eater, but you know, you're going on a hike and you can only pack 10 PB and jelly sandwiches. You've eaten them all, but you still want some snacks that taste like PB and J, here you go. It's right here. That's not me though. Um, if I want a PB and J, I'll just make a PB and J. I'm gonna give these Puffed Works Strawberry PB and J Peanut Butter Puffs an E for every we won. I think everyone can derive at least a little bit of enjoyment for this. I th think kids would probably like this if they're a big fan of PB and J. Uh, adults, you know, there's probably some pe people out there who would also snack on this, but most of all, I think it's just an interesting experience. To get your four grams of protein, you gotta eat 30 of these. One serving size is 30, which is kind of crazy. I feel like with other chips and less healthy things, you get a smaller serving size. But in this case, if you want any of the nutrition, it seems like you're probably gonna have to eat most of it. I don't know. I don't know how nutrition works. I don't know how nutrients are dissolved in the body. I'm not a scientist. I'm Chef Ian Brutal Foods. I promise that between takes, I am trying so hard to stop hiccuping. Um, no, no luck so far. It turns out that most of the reviews on Amazon for these PB and J puffs are positive. I mean, going even further, most of the negative reviews are about receiving either damaged or expired product. And then there's Nanamac. And then there's Nanamac. Terrible. Don't waste your money on this overpriced and, as my kids said, were a yucky snack. First of all, there's nearly no, no flavor of either, either peanut butter or, or honey. 
These are higher in fat, sodium, carbs, and sugar than their far more delicious rival, Nutter Puffs. I'm not gonna read this whole thing. Uh, it's a full paragraph, and to be fair, she is talking about the honey flavor of these puffed puffs. Uh, but the review was just really funny. Yep. Anyway, she likes puff, puff chips, nutter puffs, or something like that. So maybe try those. Good for kids, though. I mean, those kids sound like they were pretty picky. I think most kids would probably enjoy that, honestly. It wa wasn't too bad. Okay. We gotta move on. We gotta finish this up. Uh, uh, I have not stopped hiccuping since I took my first sip of Coke with coffee. I, I need to lay down uh, oh, no, or something. But not before dessert with oh my s'mores. <laughs> this candy bar is $5.79 at Bartell Drugs and you might think that that is overpriced, um, but what you're paying for is actually a gourmet chocolate experience. That is actually what sold me on picking this up. Uh, just the fact that it listed it as a gourmet experience, I had to find out. Also, you can't really tell just by looking at it, but it, uh, it's pretty thick and it's bumpy. Like you can tell that it's got uh, raised pieces on it somewhere. It just feels unlike any other candy bar that I've held. So I wanted to see what was up. Also, I just like s'mores. Uh, I'm down with a s'more candy bar. Uh, over Christmas, I had a number of chocolate-covered marshmallows, <gasps> which uh, I thought were really tasty, so I'm hoping to get into some of that. Huh. Well, each of the bars, they have words on them. It looks a little weird. Chew, wow, woo, tickle, tease, dazzle, crave, ah, tinkle. Now maybe I'm just not a gourmet chocolate guy, but I don't expect to find this kind of thing on a gourmet bar. Oh my God, what is this? What, what, what happened here? This is not what I was expecting given this packaging. This is just some marshmallows stuck on the bottom of a candy bar. I'm judging a lot before I taste, but if you're gonna call it a gourmet experience, it can't look like this. Okay, I need to start eating it because it's it's uh, melting in my hand right now. No. Yeah, I'm gonna try a square that has a marshmallow in there. Uh, so I get, get the whole experience. Oh my God. It's interesting. I'm realizing now that today I've tried a lot of products that are trying to taste like other things. The yogurt's trying to taste like Starburst. Yogurt's trying to taste like Gushers. Puffs trying to taste like PB and J. Candy bar trying to taste like s'mores. And this has to be the furthest away from what it's trying to imitate. This does not taste like a s'more. Um, disappointingly so. No, no. If anything, this reminds me of a Toblerone. The texture is a lot like a crunch bar, very crunchy, almost like puff rice, but instead of puff rice, it is honey graham cracker, and you can really taste that honey. And it's not bad, I mean, it's not bad, but for six bucks, I don't know. I really don't think that this is gonna remind anyone of s'mores, it just doesn't taste like a s'more. You really wanted it to taste like a s'more, it might be a better idea to have the entire base be a graham cracker, and then the top have the marshmallows on it. Um, but really, it just kind of tastes like a Toblerone. Not bad, not terrible, doesn't make me hiccup, so those are all good signs. I just think for the price, you can do a lot better. In fact, you might be able to do better within the brand itself. It seems like this company, uh, Chowow, Chowow, Kowow, something like that. Specializes in these uh, unique flavors, interesting combinations, and you know, it's weird, but it's different. It's interesting. It just seems like they probably have a better option than s'mores. I'm looking here and they've got things like potato chip, 
Honeycomb and Sprinkle Dreams. Their most popular bar seems to be Bacon Luscious Chocolate, and I mean, that sounds delicious. But the s'mores, I mean, that should say it all right there, honestly. Look at that again. It's pretty hard to find reviews for this specific candy bar. I don't know if it's new or something. Uh, and the ones that I have found are a little questionable. I know this is a little hypocritical coming from a YouTube food reviewer, but if you load up your reviews with things like hashtag will work for chocolate, uh, it's a little hard to take you seriously. Wow, this is one of the best chocolate bars that I have ever had. The chocolate is perfect, not too bitter or too sweet. The graham cracker pieces are wonderful little crispy bits, not too stale or soggy. Again, not a bad chocolate bar, and if money is no object to you, you might not care that it's expensive, but if I'm paying six bucks for candy, it's gonna be some nice candy, right? It's either gonna be really nice candy or a lot of candy, and this is kind of neither. Honestly, I don't even think it's that much nicer than a regular candy bar. I mean, I would take a take five over this any day. But that's, you know, comparing apples and oranges to the greatest candy bar ever made. So maybe that's not fair. I give that candy bar an E for everyone. I think that most people would probably enjoy it. And it's also one of the more normal things that I've tried today. That and the Pop-Tart crisps were probably the most normal things that I, ha I had. Anyway. That's it. I cannot stop hiccuping. I, uh, I really regret the Coke and coffee now. I went from, oh, this is cool, to, oh, I don't know about this. And now I'm like, why did I drink it? Why did I just not drink it? I could have just not, not had any of it. But I guess I did it for science. I did it for you guys at home. And I also did it for today's video sponsor, HelloFresh. Hello again, friends. It's me, Captain Chef Ian Brutal Foods, and today I'm traveling the cosmos aboard the USS Fresh, spreading the delicious word of Hello Fresh, America's number one meal kit. Now I know what you're probably thinking. Hello Fresh? Never heard of them. This is the 100th YouTube video I've watched today, and yet still I have never seen a Hello Fresh advertisement to enlighten me. Let me give you the tasty tidbits. HelloFresh cuts out the stressful art of meal planning and prepping so that you can actually enjoy cooking and get dinner on the table in about half an hour. And if that's not fast enough for you, they also offer oven ready and 10 to 20 minute meals as well. Select from a wide array of delicious recipes and HelloFresh ships the pre-measured ingredients and recipe cards right to your door. All you have to do is prepare it. The planning, procuring, and prepping ingredients, for a lot of people, that's the hard, time-consuming part of cooking that you just don't want to do. With HelloFresh taking care of that part for me, though, I instantly began eating healthier and saving money because I was no longer so dependent on fast food delivery. It's really flexible, too. You're able to add in extra meals to your weekly order or throw in extra proteins or even add in yummy meal compliments. And oh, baby, is the food yummy. Ahoy, look down yonder at those pork tacos, me hearties. HelloFresh isn't just convenient, it's also freaking delicious. You'll prepare restaurant quality dishes in less time than it can take to order delivery, which would probably arrive cold anyway. The ingredients are fresh, the recipe cards are easy to follow, and before you know it, you'll be saying, wow, if cooking is this easy, then why have I been eating garbage this whole time? It's also really easy to put your own fun twists on the provided recipes. We put some spinach on these tacos just because we had it on hand, and I like a nice spinach layer on my soft tacos to keep the tortilla from getting moist. So that's fun. To recap, HelloFresh is delicious, flexible, and can save you time and money. I especially recommend it if you've developed a bad habit of ordering in lately and you're looking to curb that habit in a fun, affordable, and delicious manner. So go to HelloFresh.com and use the code BRUTALMOOSE10 to get 10 free meals, including free shipping. It gets you a great deal, and it helps me out as well when you use that code, so thanks in advance. And thanks to HelloFresh for the sponsorship. Okay, well, now that you all have been educated about HelloFresh, I'm off to spread the delicious news elsewhere. Like, maybe Idaho or something.